This is the Global Broadcasting Service, serving remote outposts since 1928. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Express Monorail. Caramba, we have something really big for you today. Welcome, foolish mortals. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. This is the DBC Pod with Phil Schoen and Jason Dodge. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's pod, this week's review of May 7th, 2022. Um, we got. I think we have a good show today. Not that we never have a good show, <laughs> but uh, we got some re- really interesting topics, kind of kind of going all over the place a little bit. Trying some new things, I think. So Trying we'll see if they work or not. Well, I was listening to uh, some of the stuff here is um, inspired by our friend Matt and um, the the format. I think because I was just listening to his overrated underrated show, mm-hmm. and you know we never do lists on this show, or we we haven't in a long time. Right. And everybody likes a good list. So we're, we're going to be doing some commenting on, on lists today. But first, um, one of the biggest things last week, Phil, since you don't do the news anymore, is there were some Magic Bands out in the store, Magic yep. Band Pluses, that don't work, and then they had to return them type of thing. But um, after seeing them and the price point, what, 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 was your, what was your first take on all that? Yeah, so they, they released them earlier than expected. I think eventually the ones they released did start working. Um, they were just plain ones that got out in the store for twenty nine ninety nine, which was a little bit lower than I was expecting them to be. Super low. Uh, we'll see what the uh, the fancier looking ones are. But also, uh, th- last week was the media events for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and they were doing some other stuff with the the media that were in town, and a lot of that included showing off Magic Band Plus. So you got to see them using them with some of the gold statues that, that you yeah. know you know for the the character um, scavenger hunt and then also they showed how it will work with uh, uh, bounties in galaxy's edge mm-hmm. so they'll start like making noises and you'll also use the the app on your phone to kind of see these virtual bounties and stuff like that so they kind of showed it off a little bit and it got me you know, a bit excited to see what you know just to see them actually in working and yeah. seeing what they do and kind of how it makes, you know, the, the, the statues make noise and it makes your wrist vibrate and stuff like that. They showed it off. It, everything seemed a little more, I don't know, smaller scale than maybe I was expecting yeah. or something like that. Like it didn't, you know, it's, it still seemed fun and, you know, depending on how well it works with the app and the bounties, like that seemed like it could be fun time in, in galaxy's edge, but it didn't like wow me. No. Um, for thirty bucks, which is the same cost as like a fancy magic, like band, magic band, yeah. Band. I mean, like that's I'd spend the money. I wouldn't buy like five of them. Like again, this is the genie plus you know conversation. Yeah. I wouldn't buy them for all of my kids, um, but I'll probably get one when my uh, my wife and I go down in July uh, just to try it out. But they look kind of plain. They're like solid colors from what I saw. Um, yeah, the, the, some of the media I got to try some of the ones with different patterns. There's maybe 15 patterns. Okay, some of them are that. kind of had like the partner statue on it or like the castle. You know, nothing. Mm. It didn't see too many with like different characters. It was kind of more generic Disney stuff. Yes. So, again, yeah, but to your comment that it didn't wow me, I'm mean, like, the Mickey statue just like said some generic stuff, and that was yeah, like, yeah. So like your your magic band buzzed when you were close to them, indicating there's something to do. And then when you like shook your hand, like you were waving at Mickey, then Mickey would talk back to you with like a pre-recorded. Message. I mean, like there's plenty of things that can do that anyway. I don't need if I need a thirty dollar device on my wrist <laughs> to do that. Um, I mean, they can have some proximity sensors when you're you're nearby. You don't need a magic band for that. So I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what else they can do with those things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is a, this is a decent start, but I hope it uh, ramps up from here. I, you know, they got they have to have. You know, we were talking about this, speculating exactly what it does. Like, I wanted to count my steps, but like, it's not a hundred bucks like a Fitbit, so I guess I can't complain that yeah. it's that functionality. So we'll see. Am I excited for them? No. Will I buy one to try it out? Sure, because it's thirty bucks. Yeah, and they did um, in some of the material Disney released. They will also be have them available for your pre-arrival like if you're staying on site so you'd be you'll be able to get them at a discounted price if you do them as part of your 
your stay on site, which are similar to regular band. magic bands. Whenever so. they may be available, whenever that happens. Yeah, they said summer, I think is what they said. So we'll see. Yep. I, I want every, I want everybody to see your hat for those that are listening. Oh, yeah. He's, you got to pan your camera up a little bit because half your oh. head is kind of cut off there. Yeah. We should have done that. Ah, there we go. We're back to the normal angle. <laughs> um, strongest Avenger from the Thor movie, right? Yeah, it's from the trailer when he's uh, his uh, work, workout montage. I love it. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, um, that being said, uh, no new Discord members this week. Sad face. Um, Disney comeback, comeback Index has not changed, so we're going to skip through that. Um, I think right off the bat, the major Disney news this week is um, Doctor Strange 2 was released. And there, there, you were having some kind of debate uh, whether or not to bring your children to the movie. Yep. So um, I have thoughts on the movie. I don't know how to do this non-spoilery. So we're going to try our best, right? So Yeah, it's, some it's, major spoilers, no like giving what cameos and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll opine on some things that happened, I guess. Okay, so I brought all three of my children because we got out of the house for Mother's Day. So mom was able to chill and relax. Oh, there you go. You went to see it to screen it for your children, which mm-hmm. probably is the more responsible thing to do, frankly. <laughs> Um, so here, here, here's my here's my thing. I think it was fine for my uh, nine year old to see. wasn't really any bit surprising versus any other Marvel movie. Um, I don't think I should have brought my four year old. Uh, <laughs> not that she was like scared or spooked, and but there's some evidence of extra violence for in this. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's spoiling that just say that there's some blood kind of shown on some of the oh, characters yeah. at some point. I mean, that's been in the summer commercials and stuff right. too. So. And I'm like, mm, they were asking me, is that blood? I was like, no, that's the, um, that's oil from the machines that got splattered <laughs> up or something. I'm trying not to spoil anything. Um, I think that was the only thing that kind of concerned me a little bit. Um, but everything else was a typical Marvel movie when it comes to either like violence or anything else like that. I, I think the only other elements that might spook your children is it, it is like kind of like a scary kind of horror setting a little bit. Yep. And so if they're easily scared with like kind of dark imagery and chase and, you know, there's jump scares and stuff like that in the movie. I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying that. Um, so if your children have watched every single other MCU movie and they're okay with a little kind of like typical scary type of stuff, I think your kids will be just fine with this one. Do you agree with me, Phil, at all? I, I think so. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, figure out exactly where we're at with it. You know, we were a little worried because my kids don't see a lot of scary movies. They definitely see, you know, MCU and Star Wars and stuff like that. But my not kids haven't like, either, by the way. They don't watch scary movies. Yeah, like horror movies. And, and for those of you who don't know, this movie was directed by Sam Raimi, who did the Evil Dead movies. And you can see a lot of his fingerprints all over it. There's a lot of callbacks to, to the Evil Dead, a lot of the same type of imagery and stylistically camera panning and stuff like that. Um, so there are a number of jump scares. There is just a lot of people getting killed and it's a little yes. bit more violent. Um, someone had just made a good point though. It is, you know, it's not like a slasher movie where it's going after real people. You know, this is still a comic violence. Um, it's just, I think more of it <laughs> than I, I think, some other, I think so. uh, and it feels a little more closer in some of the killing than in, you know, like, Endgame or something where it's just you know killing monsters. This is still like you know people, but they're in another dimension and stuff like that. But I think most of the major violence is happens off camera. You just see like like it's like something happens and it's just below the camera level that where it happens yeah. or stuff like. So it's like it's heavily implied, right? Yeah. Um, but again, I don't think it's any any less violence than let's say like Endgame or something else like that. Yeah. Uh, but there are, there are, there are horror elements to it, but it's not throughout the movie, mm-hmm. right? So there are certain sequences where that's very prolific. Yeah, and, and some of that's even in the in the commercials and trailers. You know, you know, there's zombies and there's demons and stuff like that. So I think if your your kid is prone to like nightmares from stuff like that, you might want to skip this one. Um, but you know, if you've done all the MCU movies and they handled that like champs, they're probably okay. Yeah. So, you know, we're definitely going to let our 13 year old see it, you know, again, cause she hasn't really seen a lot of scary movies. So she's talking a big game, but we're like, I don't know. Let's, we'll check it out. Um, we're definitely not going to let my seven year old cause I don't think she would have interest in it anyway. Gotcha. Um, the, the questionable one is for my 10 year old son, just cause I have flashbacks to what he was a little younger, obviously at the time, but he kind of got a little overwhelmed by, um, the last Jedi 
like all the okay. killing and shooting and stuff like that. So I still have that kind of in the back of my mind, and I don't want a repeat of that. Like that, I feel like I'm a you know, if, it, if one time's an accident, two times kind of bad parenting. Yeah. Well, uh, what does it say about me that I'm like my kids had no issue seeing it at all, I had no nightmares <laughs> whatsoever, and I'm like. I mean, the, the do my my daughter, my youngest daughter, does watch Vampirina all day long on Disney yeah. Plus. So I don't know if that prepared her for like demons and monsters. I don't know. Uh, but my my kids seem to like both of my older children were fine with like the jump scares type of thing. Uh, my youngest really jumped back from it, mm-hmm. but like she didn't cry. She was like, oh, she hugged my arm a little bit and then just mm-hmm. went on to like watching it. Yet my oldest daughter, when Moana came out, that was too scared for her. We had to walk out of the theater several times. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know the evolution yeah. of that. Uh, but anyway, let, let's okay. So we covered the kids aspect of it. What was yeah. your first impression? of the movie non-spoiler version yeah non-spoiler so overall i really enjoyed it i thought it was a lot of fun um i did you know i mentioned about the the sam raimi touches and 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 kind of tone at times and sometimes i was almost a little jarring it almost felt like it was going along a normal mcu tone and then there'd be like just these act these cut scenes and and camera angles that were 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 very evil deadish that it was almost a little jarring um but overall it it still worked and they did you know go the kind of the horror route the jump scares and stuff like that um obviously really interesting where things go from here a lot of fun cameos but you know you know that they have the multiverse and stuff like that it's like all right well they have these in this multiverse but who knows what they are in the other multiverses and stuff like that. Well, I mean, there's um, there's there's plenty of like YouTube nerd discussions that can go oh, on yeah. about this that are that are a lot of fun. And um, if this was a Marvel <laughs> podcast, we'd definitely dive deep into them type of thing. Yeah, I think overall it was really fun, really good. I'm, Where would I'm you not, rank it? High, upper yeah. tier, middle tier, or lower tier of all the MCU content? Where would you? So I think it's it? one that I definitely need to see again before I really know where to rank it. My off the cuff is either like bottom of the top tier or top of the middle tier. So like in the top half, but not like a top five or anything like that. I would put this at the top of my low tier or bottom of my mid tier. Okay. Now here, here's my thing because I'm very disappointed with phase four as a whole, right? So a lot of phase four has been just stories that are self encapsulated, right? Mm -hmm. Basically in my opinion, Dr. Strange two is basically the second season of WandaVision. It just happens yes. to have Doctor Strange. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people kind of saying right? like this could have been called Wanda Vision, like Wanda movie, not Doctor. That happened to have Doctor Strange in it. Yeah. So, for example, I'm assuming you've seen everything up to Doctor Strange. So, spoilers for everything MCU except <laughs> Doctor Strange. Um, you know, Wanda was an excellent show, and it finished this weekend for me. Um, Spider Man was all one and done. Right? There's no continuation of it. Um, Loki was excellent. That's probably the best, I think, of, of all the Phase 4, setting the scene, right? Like, cause I'm, I'm looking mm-hmm. to see where we're going, transitioning to yeah. Phase 5. Because where, where, right now, Eternals was a terrible movie. Um, you know, it, it, it had some great parts, but as, as it fitting into the MCU, other than just showing the, these big galactic beings and then the, the teaser or the post credit scene that kind of <laughs> sees where they're going next type of thing, yeah. the movie itself was kind of like, okay, I don't, I don't really understand what's going on. Um, there, everything else has basically been one or done. There's no like strings. Like for example, the first Iron Man movie, they teased the Avengers at the very end of it. Yeah. Right? So that was the plot line that every single show that you were watching was leading up to the Avengers, right? Like, like you knew where we were going with this. Right now we've got the Loki multiverse and the rules and then the rules without King. We've got the Spider-Man multiverse storyline with Doctor Strange that just happened. And then we've got this movie's version of the multiverse, which is a lot different than everything else. But maybe we're seeing it because it's all unraveling and blah, 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 blah. It's madness, right? That type of thing. Mm-hmm. There's no distinct plot line where we're moving forward, except for if you watch a bunch of like nerd YouTube channels yeah. because they're guessing where this is going yeah, yeah. Um, type of thing. And I'm not a comic book nerd. I'm a nerd for sure, but I'm not a comic book guy. So like I'm, I'm watching this. Okay, that all makes sense. But you're not getting it in the movies, and that's what's frustrating me. So that's why I'm ranking yeah. this, you know, pretty low because it's it just finished and it ended, and that was it. There was no nothing leading to the next thing. And I was expecting, I had high high expectations for this movie. Yeah, 
And I was expecting like the level of like Captain America Civil War type of thing where you're getting cross ties. Maybe we would see like, you know, a, different characters. I'm almost spoiled that what wasn't in it. But like I was <laughs> I was a little disappointed that it wasn't like a a major, major cross type of event. And it was it was a good movie, but like there's plenty better ones in the MCU. Yeah. I saw actually a video where they they said basically the same thing where before it was every movie sort of built on the last one and led you to the next thing Mm -hmm. almost sequentially where now it's like they have these different individual stories that are kind of showing you a different angle of what's going on and eventually it will build to something, but it's not linear at all. Uh, And so maybe once we get there, you'll look back and like see it, how it all fit together. But for now it doesn't feel like the pieces of the same puzzle. No, uh, that, that's a great way of putting it. I, I, trust me, I'm giving Kevin Feige like, the benefit of the doubt, right? He pulled yeah. off a masterpiece in Endgame. So, like, I, I, I'm there with it. It's just you can't see the forest through the trees at this point. And I'm, I'm pretty sure in a year or two from now, we'll look back like, oh, that all makes sense, right? And Because everything that's planned is, 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 is going forward. What, one thing I want them to finish up is – Stop like referencing the uh, the snap and dusting like oh we're all co-. like it's done like it happened a long time ago in our our timeline right like our, our real world it's time to move on to like the next stuff right let's yeah I mean granted I, I don't know what happened because of COVID and their scheduling and all this other stuff maybe like the year and a half after Endgame it was referencing the snap and then we moved on but I think COVID kind of probably screwed all that up so even though it's been three years or so since then, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, question for you then moving forward in the MCU, how, how do the, cause we've got, we've got Thor and then we got guardians that's filming. And then we got a couple other projects kind of along this way. Yeah. Think- there's Wakanda forever coming out and then Ant-Man and in quantum mania. Well, I think didn't the Ant-Man and uh, one other, Film just swap again positions. Or yeah, something? I thought that one's now sooner, and they pushed out the Marvels or Captain the Captain Marvel two movie got so pushed out. I, I think. don't know what they're doing, and the fact that they can kind of twist these around kind of doesn't have any word, but questions like how is, are we still going to be having the same discussion? Like how yeah. these all piece together in a year from now? So um, those are my thoughts on Doctor Strange two. Um, without having anything to spoil, I think we've kind of beaten this one to death. Yep. Um, okay, so you did something with Matt's ranking. So what, what's we're we're going to do a list type of evaluation. So w- what are we doing here, Phil? So I figured out the best way to do this, uh, either on video or off video. But so um, so Matt, friend of the show, Matt Pato, has a trip coming up where he's going down with two friends, and he put together a short spreadsheet trying to list out all the attractions that he really wanted to make sure they saw. This is something he said um, he basically using this trip to convince his friend to like do a big family trip later. So he wants them to kind of see the the greatest hits of Walt Disney world over like two days, Mm -hmm. but it's obviously, you know, it's three adult males going down. It's not a family or whatever. So I've mentioned, I think recently on the show that I have a couple of family friends and that, that they're, you know, multiple trips coming up for some of them. It's their first trip. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do the same thing, but with them in mind and say, okay, for a family going down for their first trip, what, how would I rank the, the attractions? What would I say are must do's for you to do versus, you know, cause you can't do everything in your first trip. And I thought it was a, be useful for them to see, um, but also be kind of, how is it different when you have different parties or, or different makeup to your party going to Walt Disney world? How, you know, how do the priorities change and that sort of thing? Yeah, so I, I think it's an excellent premise. So I can critique you. I can critique Matt. Um, okay, well, let, let's set the same. So we have Matt, three guys going down, and they're trying to preview. He, Matt's trying to basically turn somebody into a Disney fanatic, basically. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. You've got a family of six. What's the age range? Of- yeah, so the kids are aged about, um, it's like six to 14. It's uh, two girls, two boys. The girls are older. Okay, so we've got teenage girls, and we got younger boys. So yeah. I would say peak Disney – would be probably somewhere in the five to seven range for a first time trip. Like if you had to do a mm-hmm. once in a once in a lifetime trip, like that's the magic age. It's probably around five, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit younger if some of the other kids. But anyway, so that's that's a that's a good that's a good range of kids. I think that's it's 
it allows us to go and rank the these rides appropriately mm-hmm. with kids yeah. enjoying and the parents still have young kids where they can live through the joy of their children and they're not just teenagers rolling their eyes at their parents because they're on small world type of thing, right? So there, yeah. there's going to be some magic um, involved with, with, with the kids. And then I think one thing, I, you know, when I was talking to the mom, she specifically said, you know, this might be their only trip. They want to see like what makes Disney Disney and enjoy and see some of the classics and stuff. So she doesn't want to just go like, okay, we're in a two hour line for this big ride. And then we're in a two hour line for another big ride and stuff like that. Like, you know, are there smaller rides that we can just, you know, the, some of the classics that we can just walk up to and stuff like that. So, you know, I probably maybe rank some of those types of rides a little higher because of that. Well, so let's go through. So I did, I hopefully I didn't screw up your spreadsheet because I just realized I might <laughs> your own copies, but I put, I conditionally formatted it. So the deeper the green, I'm not showing it here for anybody, for, for you, the deeper the green is the higher the score, the deeper the red is the lower the score. Yeah. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just mention some of the, the peaks and the valleys yep. on this. So um, you're, we're going to start just at Magic Kingdom. You've got no tens on here because rank 10 is a must do, right? Yep. So no one's ranked a 10 in any of this, um, which I find interesting. Um, you have with the score of nine, Hall of Presidents, Small World. Um, I almost read Magic Carpets, but it's not. No, it's uh, Haunted Mansion, not Hall of Presidents. Haunted Mansion. Oh, man. I, oh, yes. Excuse me. I'm, well, actually, you know what? I'm surprised. It's, well, that's probably your other answer is probably at Epcot, I would imagine. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. Haunted Mansion, Jungle Cruise, Meeting Mickey in Town Square, and Pirates. And frankly, I, I don't think I could. That, that's, those are your classics, right? It's, you know. Haunted Jungle Pirates, and um, to me, that's that's those are the top three in my book um, on there. So, other than meeting, I've I've actually never met Mickey Mouse in town. town yeah, Square. I don't know. Just one of those things for a family their first time going. You know, whether it ha- happens, I know he meets at other parks too. But it was just like I think at some point you got to meet Mickey. Oh, uh, for sure. Disney, so. uh, we always met Mickey over food and yeah. his character dining. So we yeah, they're saying they're, they're probably not doing a lot of table service things. So I was Fair not enough. factoring that in too much. Okay, so now on the low end of the spectrum, um, you have two deeper ones here. Um, Hall of Presidents, not worth doing, which I find interesting. And then uh, Magic Carpets. I mean, I, I, would, um, I would definitely say Magic Carpets is worth it. I'm, I'm surprised. Why is Hall of Presidents so low? Just because of the duration of the show? I think just some, yeah, just as compared to other things, it's a little... A little dry maybe for some of the younger kids and the duration of it. I mean, obviously, if it's, you know, raining or something, it's a good thing to dive into. If you have time, you want some air conditioning. That's why I included it on the list. Um, but, you know, compared to other things, I don't think it's a, a must-do. It's, it's not a must-do for us. I mean, I think it's no. it's impressive with all the animat- audio animatronics, but it's a, it's not a must-do for us. So. So I'm looking through some of your other upper end choices. I mean, you've got all the, the secondary things, people mover, Peter Pan's flight. Um, you know, do you have Carousel of Progress on here? Am I missing that? I do. It's at, uh, at the bottom of Disney's. Of so you have yeah. it at the seven, which is like, see it if you can. Um, Mickey's Philhar Magic. I, I wouldn't rank that one as high. To me, that's the, again, I haven't seen the new version of it, so I don't yeah. know if it's, it's worth That would be something I would say don't bother because it's a – Pain in the butt to load. You guys got to stand out there. It's a quick show, and then you're, you're out. I mean, I would spend my time elsewhere. Um, and there's nothing else really notable here. Nothing that surprises me, like Liberty Square Riverboat, Tea Party, or all fours. Um, and then you have Magic Kingdom at large. So how, yeah, so how are you defining that? For all of his, um, and like for Epcot, I actually separated it like the front of the park and the back of the park at large. Those are basically just like spending time in the park. So not at an attraction, but just kind of wandering around, taking in the sceneries and, you know, just appreciating being in the park. See, to me that I, I, I would rank that much higher. I would, that the threshold is a seven only because this is what I include going up mm-hmm. main street and getting, going to the confectionery, getting a coffee, getting your picture taken, going to Casey's, getting some ice cream, like any of those activities, not all of yeah. them, but any combination of those, like you got it. You got to suck in main street when you're the first there, like listen to the mu- music and stuff like that. That's how I would kind of define it type mm-hmm. of thing. And then maybe you include that with the, the fireworks show at the end of the night. I don't, I don't know. Um, I did put enchantment as a separate item, but, and, and the same with the parade. I'm glad you ranked Tiki room 
very high. I mean, for a ride that's pretty easy and quick to get onto, that, that's, yeah. that's definitely a, a good thing. Now, let's look at Matt's stuff. Again, this is three guys. I don't know if he's doing this to like make sure the guys are having a good time on this trip or showing off, but he's got all the mountains basically at nines, no tens. Um, and then he's got pirates ranked high. He's got people mover at an eight, which, which kind of surprises me. A little bit with um, some other guys that are, might be doing things. He has he has a lot of these unranked, so like, these are like his, his top. Yeah, so he only put up like these are the things we're going to try to get to because they're they're doing all four all all four all four parks in two days. Sorry, I, don't, I couldn't speak for a moment there. Um, and they're literally like staying one night. Like they're flying in, doing two parks, staying two parks, flying. Right? Home. Are they? So a- he knows they're not going to get to everything. <laughs> so are are three older guys middle-aged guys allowed to queue up for uh, meeting princesses because he has that ranked if i maybe oh she no, no, screwed it up again <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at a wrong monitor it was he had met ranked someone else i was like i was imagining the three of them trying to be <laughs> cinderella, or whatever, cinderella yeah. or whatever i'm like you're not allowed to do that um anyway he ranked even magic kingdom at large as a three but I think it's just he thinks it's just wandering around the park doing nothing other than just kind of watching things. Yep. So I think he kind of. I, I I think when you're planning this trip, whether you're mm-hmm. telling a family for the first time that they're going, to me, I think I think the thing is we're defining this differently in our yeah. heads, right? So part of me that would go on and say Magic Kingdom at large or a park at large because there's each one of these is like you need to slow down and st- get your head out of your phone. Don't just don't go rush to attraction to attraction. Um, that's what I did my first time as an adult with with mm-hmm. kids. We just got my sister just ran as ragged across the park, right? And um, I think you just need to slow down and enjoy. I mean, you can walk with a purpose, right? Just don't meander, but like get your head up and just kind of enjoy it. The, the the music, the smells, the, the people, everything else. It's it's really fun to to enjoy. So I would I would. I wouldn't say that you had to do this, but I would emphasize to like saying like. No, I, 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 once you say that, I think that's a a good point. And maybe I'll you know whether I, I don't know maybe instead of giving it a score, I list out like here's things to do to like take in the the park or something well, like, like mean, you say you know walking down Main Street, listening to the music, listening to the music in Adventureland, getting a Dole Whip, things like that. Well, I mean like getting a Dole Whip, obviously, right? That's that's something that everybody needs to try at least once. But like I think when you're trying to, if I was going to another family. That mm-hmm. were, you know, their, their, their kids were on my, the same soccer team as my daughter type of thing. And said, we've never been to Disney. Like, what do, what do we do? Right? I, I mean, I would hear all the good rides. This is how you do it. Um, as a, you know, if you're interested, there's like the Genie Plus thing. Here's how you might be able to take advantage of it if you want to yep. spend the money. But I'd be like, the, I, my thing would be the biggest thing you could do is get your head out of the phone, get your head out of the map kind of figure out what you want to do before you go down, like the, the main points, right? Mm-hmm. Do, you want, do you want to do character-driven stuff and dark rides? Do you want to do roller coasters? If that's – you figure it out on your own, but, like, take your time, go from place to place, spend your whole day in there, and, and, and just take in – you know, walk around a little bit from, from time to time. And, and I, think, I think people might have a better trip if you kind of forewarn them to not, like – we got to rush. We got to get our money's worth. Like you know how like I can imagine just first timers like we just spent all this money, uh, depending on who, who who the father and mother yeah, yeah. are, right? Type of thing. It's just like we got to go. We got to go. Or oh, we could show up at two o'clock in the afternoon and leave at like you know after four or five hours type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let's move on to Epcot. Unless you you wanted anything else on Magic Kingdom, did I miss anything? Nope. Then you want to put out there. So Epcot, you've got nothing major on here. Um, other than World Showcase at large, right? So obviously you want to meander that. Now, would you put a focus on that with a family of six? That's my question. I still would because I think it's very unique. I think it's something you can't do elsewhere, um, especially, you know, I know they don't have the, the cultural representatives really there, but I think it's, you know, I don't think you need to spend three hours doing it, but, you know, kind of to your point of like, you know, taking a moment and just kind of appreciating where you are and taking in the scenery and maybe if some of the musical acts are performing and the drummers and stuff like sure. that, like, you know, just don't r- like run through the loop to get to the next attraction, like kind of meander through mm-hmm. it and kind of appreciate what it is. So I, I still would, um, you know, like making sure that you're, you're appreciating the time that you're spending there no, more than anything. I, I totally agree with that. 
Um, because you have the world celebration nature discovery at large, that's you. I, I'm surprised it's a five. I mean, you can't enjoy it. You can't, you can't walk. Yeah, through, that's true. Right? <laughs> at this point, um, I joke, I joke. Um, but namely, you have Spaceship Earth, Harmon- or Harmonious. I think, obviously, that's, that's a fantastic show. You have basically the two attractions that you're ranking in eight. Nothing's at nine is Frozen Ever After and Spaceship Earth. Um, yeah. Obviously, I think you have to do Spaceship Earth. It's the, the icon of the park, right? Yeah. You, got, you have to do that. Um, why would you pick Frozen Ever After other th- after... You know, either I think just the age of the kids, and, and honestly, that's something I, I would probably talk to them a little mm-hmm. bit. Like, which movies are they really into? Are they, you know, because Frozen was such a big thing, and I think, you know, that ride, I know a lot of kids really appreciate it, and it's like their kind of must do thing at Epcot. Um, Fair enough. So that would, so I would at least raise it to them, like, you might want to do this, but maybe mm-hmm. if they don't care about Frozen or whatever, then, then don't kill yourself for I'm it. I'm surprised you didn't give Living in the Land a 10. Frankly, I, I was trying to rein myself in. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I should. You're right. I'll change it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So, I mean, Epcot, no surprises, right? I mean, it's you, you've got mostly almost everything at a seven. The only thing is Nemo at a six, and I think you're being extremely like, like the problem. I think with Nemo and people go, it's like, look, there's an aquarium, right? Yes. If you have time, or if it's raining, it's really cool just to spend time in there. But I wouldn't direct anybody to it if this is their first time. At, at, yeah. at Epcot only because you don't want if they, if you go there first because it's at the entrance of the park right and the, 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 the times might be low you might be setting them up for failure like what are we <laughs> doing here at Epcot is this the whole park and then they might get discouraged to kind of yeah. go back and explore so um, obviously you wouldn't do that because Epcot's your favorite part you're going to sell it pretty hard um, but like I would never tell somebody to go into on Nemo unless it's like you know they don't have anything else to do everything yeah. else is too long and it's a great way to kind of walk into the um, the aquarium, right? And kind of kind of see all the stuff that's going on back there. Yeah. All right, let's move to Hollywood Studios. This is interesting. Well, this is- yeah, just before we do, oh, yeah, kind of, the one that I kind of wasn't sure what to put, just knowing they do have some smaller kids. I don't, and I just the time suck it can take. Was I? I only gave Test Track a five. I know okay some people that. really like that attraction. For me, it's a good attraction, but it's like I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to devote so much time to make sure we got that done that you miss out on a lot of other things if it goes down or something There's like that. So, so that's why I kind of like like brought it down a little bit. Um, but I know some people really love it, and it would be a must must do for them. Well, I, I don't get Matt here. I mean, like basically, he gave Harmonious an eight. Everything else is a red score on here. So it's like <laughs> Test Track is a th- uh, seven. You like he basically he's going to do Frozen. And test track with his three guys, right? Like, or two other guys, his two friends, which befuddles me. Remy's is a seven as well. Doesn't want to do Nemo. That's a two. Living the land is a five, and I get that. Soren is a six, which surprises me. Like, if you're gonna have somebody go to Epcot, right, in four attractions, like you gotta go on Soren. It's a classic. Tech is really cool. It's an enjoyable ride for people that you know are not into anything specific. So yeah, that's that's the one thing that kind of threw me off. Um, and, and like how he leaves Guardians with the Galaxy completely blank because well, I think they're going before it's open. I thought they were going. Or, actually, there. I'm not sure when they're going, but hey, yeah, they're obviously, I had maybe because it wasn't open yet, he didn't add it. But yeah, I put that in there. So we're going to Disney's Hollywood Studios next. A lot of red for you on this one, uh, but our first tens of the list, right? So. For Matt and his friends, the two must-do rides are Rise of the Resistance and Slinky Dog Dash, which, I mean, you can't argue with that, right? Those are two most popular rides in the park. You have Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at 10, and you have two nines with Rise and Slinky Dog's, Slinky Dog yep. Dash. Um, I, I think it really highly depends on how motivated you are through the day and yep. how you're going to do this. This is the park where you're going to spend money to get on attractions. I would not recommend this park to a party of six if it was <laughs> three days. Um, but if they had huge Star Wars fans, obviously, yes, you have to go. Um, yeah, they're doing four days, one day per park. Right. So, That's what they have said. So. With a part of family of six, and you know, it's it's a lot of money to get those individual lanes for yeah. Rise. Like, okay, you're going to have to go and sprint back for Rise at opening and, and try to get in there or pay for it, essentially. You're yeah. going to be paying... What's Rise of the Resistance going for right now? In your, in your Fifteen. Lives? So fifty. You know, that's that's what almost uh, ninety bucks for the yep. family. I don't know. That might be worth one. This is your only once and only. 
I would drop the nine. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about it. I was trying to, I was actually, we were chatting like over at uh, Messenger uh-huh. and, we, and trying to explain Genie Plus oh, and the God. differences, like typing it. I'm like, this is so complicated. Is- but uh, nope, but I think they know they have to like, you know, to do some of the stuff, they're going to have to spend extra and they, I think they're prepared to for a few things. But Somebody in Discord linked a Touring Plans article that uh, described stacking and how to use Genie mm-hmm. Plus. Um, if you can find that, I think Doxy on Discord posted it. Um, it was I, I. I took that 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 uh, article and I forwarded it to my mother and my wife, who are clueless as far as Genie Plus, and they somewhat got it. <laughs> so my, the, the, if they could go through the excruciating detail of listening to fo- um, following through that article, it, it, it I think it simplifies things quite a bit. But yeah, that's that's that, this is a nightmare of a park, I and mean, like you have everything in, in red here, but basically. Everything that isn't um, Galaxy's Edge or, or uh, let's see, Slinky, Slinky Dog Dash. Do you have uh, where's Mania on here? Toy Story Mania is an eight. Every eight. So yeah, Toy Story Land and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Everything else, just don't bother. Basically, I had that, and then Frozen Sing Along and Mickey Minis. Everything else, I was like, yeah. Eh. Well, well, especially, I, I don't know, like Tower of Terror, I don't know with the little kids, if they're the younger kids, if they're really up for that or not yeah. and stuff. So so it's a little hard with some of them. So I was trying to pick things that I think they'll enjoy. But Yeah, I mean, there, there's and Hollywood Studios at large is only fun if you can enjoy an adult beverage as you walk through it. <laughs> because the park itself is not very well constructed. There's a lot of double. No, the layout is very poor. Yep. Um. And, but it's more enjoyable when you can sit in the shade and have like a Jack Daniels, uh, <laughs> not a smoothie, um, icy, I guess you can call it or whatever. They, they kind of do that on the side out there. So that, that's, that's definitely interesting. Okay, so moving on to Animal Kingdom, you have uh, the Safari ranked at a 10 and Flight of Passage as an 8. Um, but Animal Kingdom at large as an 8 as well. So what, what's your overall thinking which, with telling people what to do at Animal Kingdom? So a lot of it for them, I think, is just taking the park, taking the details of it, mm-hmm. taking how it's put together, taking Pandora, you know, especially if you're there at night, um, and just, you know, appreciate it for the park it is. And then I think, you know, the safari, I think, is the, the tent pole of the, the park and something super unique that you know, we certainly can't do where we live in New York. Um, so I think, you know, that that's why it was a priority for me. You know, I, I think Flight of Passage would have been higher if I knew the, the kids were good good for those that type of ride Mm -hmm. um so i I lowered it a little bit just in case you know there's any motion sickness concerns or anything but um yeah i think there's a couple like must do type things at animal kingdom but otherwise it's it's taken in the park as a whole so here here's my concern if you were to take these scores i mean obviously Mm -hmm. everybody knows animal kingdom is my least favorite park (laughs) right um but I, i think it's the most beautiful right so animal kingdom at large is like thumbs up by me right Mm-hmm. Um, if it's not hot because it's the hottest park, right? Sure. It's the least amount of shade. Here's, here's my thing. So you're going to a family of six. Hey, by the way, here's the park that you can spend a lot of your day at. Um, you might tell them, go early, you can leave early, that type of thing. Uh, but if they're spending that much money, they're going to want to be at the park. I don't know if they're like full-day park people or what they're, they're planning on being there the full day. I have mentioned that you might want to, you know, take a break from the park and go like to a resort or something like that, which they actually didn't realize you were allowed to use Disney transportation if you weren't staying on property and stuff. So it's like, it's just funny the, the information that we take for granted. Oh, uh, <laughs> Not everybody knows, you know. Well, here's the thing. So you have everything at fours and fives, basically, in a couple threes, yeah. right? Um, if you want, you might discourage them from this park by kind of giving them this information. Right. So I, I, obviously I want to give them numbers, right? Like you so said, here's what you want to hit up. You want to hit a flight of passage mm-hmm. and the safari. And if you have time, wander the park because it's gorgeous. There's a bunch of animal trails. Take them at your own pace, that yep. type of thing. And there's a bunch of other rides that, um, you may be interested. You may not check them out online and check. I, I would, I would kind of leave it vague, right? Yeah. Cause you don't want to set them up like. Knowing what I know now versus Animal Kingdom was the first park I went to as an adult um, in our trip. Because we did like Animal Kingdom Day then and then two Magic Kingdom Days, right? The first time I went back seven years ago. And if I knew what Animal Kingdom was when I went in, I would have been kind of defeated. Because that was even before Flight of Passage was open right. in that park, right? Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the park when I was there. Um, but... 
knowing what I know now and my <laughs> setting expectations could be an issue for this park. Um, I see you have Festival of Lion King also scored an eight. That's a pretty cool show um, for anybody to kind of see, you know, knowing Disney entertainment, even though we yep. had that discussion, what was it, a week or two ago about, about the show being <laughs> yeah. overrated, underrated type of thing. Um, so, okay, I, I dig it. I, I Looking at Matt's, he's basically everything blank. He's got a couple sixes. He's got Flight of Passage as an eight, Animal Kingdom Large as a three. And um, is this is like he's probably going to go in the morning and then bounce as soon as he can. I, yeah, right? I forget the order of it, but he's definitely – I mean, I think it's mostly get over there to do Flight of Passage and, you know, maybe Everest and stuff because he wasn't even sure if they'd do the safari, um, not because he didn't want to do it, but just it could take a chunk of time. Yep. And he wasn't sure if they'd have so much time. So. Are we assuming that we're allowed to park hop whenever at this point? Cause he- um, no, he was still assuming like 2 p.m., but that they would go over like, you know, by the time – you know, you can get in 13 minutes early. You got to get over there and stuff like that. So I guess he was so soon. I forget which park he was doing first. I think he might have been coming here second and then heading to the airport. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. So, I mean, I have some – that concludes the list. I, I think this is a pretty <laughs> cool exercise. It, it, it's it's interesting how people view these things differently. Uh, hopefully, we didn't go too fast for the, those out there that are just listening to us. Um, my main – one of the things, actually, I, I want to—I was thinking about talking about in today's show, but maybe we'll save it because trip planning, my trip every single week is probably a little boring for you guys listening out there. <laughs> but um, because we have hoppers and Genie Plus, and being able to do, we we're thinking, okay, we're used to single day parks, so now we can hop. Okay, we got to set that up. Now with Genie Plus, where you can, um, you know, I think I think next week we have to star that post that was in our the Genie Plus thread on Discord. Mm-hmm where somebody did four parks and they were managing individual lightning lanes and lightning lanes for four different parks all day. I think they got 11 things done or something else like that. Yeah, was, uh, Dina did that. That was an amazing. That was amazing. And I'm like, I want to do that because if I could do that, like I want to do like a four-day park. But mm-hmm. I'm hoping that we can you can bounce from park to park um, come July versus 2 o'clock. I think there's a – I'd say there's a thirty percent chance that they knock out the, the hopper rule by midsummer, but we'll see. Um, okay, so that 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 was a lot of fun. We're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk. I wanted to. I got to structure this better for park strategy, yeah. Phil, and, and kind of get my thoughts set up on how I want to do this type of thing. Okay, so we're about halfway through the show. Um, Phil, you have um, Matt came to us with an idea for a weekly discussion point. Why don't you set this up for us? This is an yeah, event on so Discord. Just to try to build up some more engagement on, on Discord, we have like, it feels like we go through some highs and lows, like sometimes it's a really good dialogue and then sometimes, you know, it gets a little a little quiet and stuff like that. So we wanted to pre- pepper in some ideas, I think, for getting conversation going. So what we were going to do is uh, launch uh, every Wednesday a discussion topic. Um, we'll post it there. I'll post links in social media. Obviously, we're talking about it now. Um, basically just to get people's thoughts on things and so we could share advice and, and, and just build up the engagement among the, the Discord community. Um, we're trying this out using the Discord event feature, so we'll yes. see how, how successful we are with it. Uh, but like I said, we'll, we'll pepper it onto uh, social media and stuff like that too so people can answer multiple places. But um, this week's topic that we want to talk about is uh, dining because I think that's something people like talking about. And I was thinking about it because we're starting to plan our trip and stuff like that is on your next Disney trip, what dining, whether it's a table service, a snack, a quick serve, whatever it is, are you most looking forward to? So, um, you know, maybe it's going back to a favorite. Maybe it's having that that snack you have every time. Um, maybe it's something new. I think that'd be great to hear. Like, is there's a restaurant you you that's new to you that you're really excited to to eat at that you're planning on for your next trip? So, that is the topic of this week. If there if there isn't anything about a Discord, even if it's quiet, but if somebody just says something, you can have a discussion that goes on days, especially when it's yeah. Like, what's your opinion? And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. everybody gets starts either your opinion's terrible or that was a good idea. Yeah. I never thought about it back and forth. Yeah. So, so sometimes there's just not a little news going on and then you know nobody's brought up a night but you're, you're right as soon as somebody says hey what about this and then next thing you know there's pages of comments so. yes um okay phil we've got probably about another 15 minutes or so do you want to do attractionality next or would you like to do what everybody's talking about because what everybody's talking about is kind of interesting yeah why don't we do that okay so once you set us up what, what is everybody yeah, talking so, about phil? what everyone's talking about is uh, the other big news that came out this week um i think it was also shared while the, the the media members were there is updated concept art for epcot uh for the world celebration overhaul specifically and uh, also showing some of the more details for the moana journey of water attraction 
Um, so it was interesting comparing sort of the original plans they had for World Celebration, where they were going to have that three-story observation area and stuff like that. And now it's, it's definitely a little bit more smaller scale. Mm -hmm. um, you can see where they're almost like rebuilding some of the Communicore areas. Um, they're referencing some of the old names like Communicore and things like that. They're going to have a live event uh, area so bands can play and stuff like that. Um, really helping the area foster for the festivals and yep. stuff like that. Um, but I was pretty impressed by the, the concept art for the Journey of Water. It seems more uh, expansive than maybe yeah. I thought it was going to be in my head. You know, there's almost like like I thought it was going to be one area. There's almost like three areas to it it's or like something like that. Almost. And it looks like a really nice area to just spend some time in. You know, there's obviously a lot more foliage going to be added to Epcot over all that area, but especially here, lots of jumping fountains and things like that. So they still don't have a lot of details as to like what the plot of that it is or the <laughs> yeah. storyline. Um, but I was pretty impressed by those concept arts. So the rest of it looks, looks really nice. It'll be good to have it done. Um, other thing that stood out to me is they really highlighted there will be lights in the pavement in certain sure, areas, yeah. um, and they really feel like at nighttime it'll be you know pretty special the lighting there, and that they'll be chasing changing things out for the seasons, hmm. so they'll have different like uh, features like statues and things like that that will change out with the seasons. So I think what kind of keep it more more alive I guess throughout the year. I mean, I always envisioned this when we saw like the original changes at D twenty three three years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I really like the greenery of everything, mm -hmm. right? It's not like all concrete, big giant fountain and these buildings surrounding it type of thing. It, it, it's less, you know, UN General Assembly feel. Yeah. And more kind of like, you know, to me, like to me, like if I was redoing like Tomorrowland, the futuristic kind of like hopeful view of like, you know, um, a large city that Walt originally envisioned, envisioned Epcot to be. It's it's now greenery, right? It's you know yeah. climate change. It's you know not polluting, so it's it's a lot of trees and vegetarian vegetation and stuff like that. So I, I really liked um, that view of it. And then, um, like you said, there's a lot of the Moana part was really large. I mean, like I think well, at first I was like like a pond and like a little yeah. waterfall. <laughs> well, or they showed this. They always just showed this one angle of it. And it was just like kind of like cave with a little fountain thing, and you're like, oh, okay. But this had a whole bunch of different areas and stuff like that. And by the way, if you haven't seen these pictures, go on any Disney news blog of your choice, Disney uh, Disney Parks yeah. blog, anywhere. They have that. This is all over social media. Everybody. I'll have some of the links in the show notes too. Yep. Once this goes out. So I, I, the the barges in in the in the <laughs> lake were missing. So I think yeah. obviously. The, not that they're going to be gone, but like an artist to be like, those are ugly. I don't want them in my picture. <laughs> um, that's what I think more more likely than not. I think they just, uh, I mean, it, it was kind of in the distance. I think they just were like, okay, yeah. the focus uh, is here, not yeah. there. And I, I think somebody pointed out they weren't in the original ones either. So, I mean, it's just, it's not part of world celebration. So it wasn't there. But. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm down with that. The changing of the festival pavilion, whatever. So, I mean, I was listening to Len Tess and Jim Hill's podcast this morning, and they were kind of making fun of this. Um, you know, I assume a lot of corp corporate people wanted it, wanted something like high up so they could feel special. This is not my idea. This is what, what uh, Len Testa was saying, also. So it's not like I'm, I don't think I'm having an original thought here, but I think it's um, interesting what they're what they're kind of going with. And um, I don't know. I, I think it's I think it'd be if we can if they can create an atmosphere where it's everybody kind of hanging out in the evening, watching Harmonious in the background, having looking at Spaceship Earth, bands are kind of playing. Um, Adult beverages being served, maybe some like the food and wine stuff kind of coming up into this area yeah. a little bit. Um, it, it, can, it kind of reminds me of the nostalgia in my head for the couple of good times I had at Disney Springs where it's just in the fall. It was a cool evening, like literally temperatures low and uh, having a couple of drinks and bands and, you know, kids running around and kind of dance. I can kind of like you kind of get that feeling of like um, – if anybody's had like uh, uh, local parks put on like concerts in the summer type of thing. I was going to say, it almost reminds me, you know, like Walt's original idea of Epcot was an actual city and that almost feels like uh, the center of a town, right? Yeah, or like, you know, town square. Of like a larger town, like, you know, having a summer festival or something like that. So, yeah, I, I don't think anybody had any bad things to say about this, but there's a lot of cynical things people were Yeah, there's definitely a lot, I mean, even with hearing some of the reviews of Guardians or some cynical 
parts in there too, just comparing it to old Epcot and what Epcot's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm not worried um, about what Epcot was supposed to be. People are, um, you know, just saying, you know, obviously it's scaled back, so they're cutting costs and things like that. But for what it is, it looks really nice. And if that's what they can achieve, uh, you know, I think I've said this before, the Epcot of the next five years will be a lot better than the Epcot of the last 10. Yeah, So no, for sure. I, I'm totally with you on that. And plus, Epcot is really focused on the World Showcase at this point, right? That's where everybody's <clears> going. Um, hopefully... Discovery neighborhood areas or whatever they're called now um, could have a nice vision in mm-hmm. let's say a decade from now. Once once the I forget what the directions are. What's the 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 west is is dis, um, where guardians yeah. are. The east is where living with the land and, yeah. and um, everything else. Like that whole section with Soren and the aquarium and. Um, What's the other pavilion? Um, imagination. Imagine, imagination. Thank you. Um, once that's all kind of, I, I think imagination needs to be revitalized a little, yes. little bit too, tremendously so. And I think they can have a nice balance if they kind of, I, I don't think they need a, uh, if you remember Project Gemini that we talked about last year, I don't think they need a roller coaster going through no. a, um, a jungle Earth or there. something else like that. Yeah. But I, I'm excited. I, I, I'm, what I, what, with all, I don't really care about all the details because I'll see it when it's finally done, that type of yeah. thing. But what I kind of liked was that reinforcing that they haven't forgot about Epcot and they kind of realized that uh, we kind of need to see something because it's been a construction zone for how long has it been now? I don't know. <laughs> Five years. <laughs> right. So um, I think it's good that they're they're now mindful of that and like mm-hmm. they need to get this done as soon as possible. And it feels like that, you know, I was more hopeful that, you know, a lot of this will be done for my December trip. But I don't think that'll yeah. happen. Yeah. It's going into next year. But it does seem like they're – there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Like they're getting there. They're working towards the finish line. Um, let's just hope the light at the end of the tunnel isn't Darth Vader with his <laughs> lightsaber. But. Well, I mean, it, feel, it feels like just watching people take pictures of everything. I think they're accelerating the build. You have yeah. more than like four people working on site now. Definitely, yeah, it seems like they're, they're like kind of that, I don't want to say final push because I don't think we're quite there, but like they're, they're, they're actually doing their jobs. Yeah, they're yeah they're exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Um, okay, let's end the call this week, or this call, the podcast this week, with attractionality. Mm-hmm. Um, this week was Toy Story Mania. And for those who don't know, it's playtime. Step inside Andy's room and make your way through a toy chest full of classic games before picking up a pair of special 3D glasses. Then board your carnival-inspired tram and use your spring action shooter to take your best shot at an array of moving targets. It's a nice, nice video game. I really enjoyed it. I love the cue for this ride. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about it right now. So, Phil... How much do you like the concept of this attraction? Ride through a video game with Toy Story characters and a talking potato. <laughs> so um, this might be my one controversial pick. I was the the person who gave it a three. Okay. Um, and I again, I'm focusing on the word concept, not execution, because I think the execution was really well. But just the concept of we're base. It's basically a video game. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're we're traveling all this way to have an amazing family vacation, and I remember how hard it was to get a paper fast pass in that day to play a video game you know they even had a home console version of it that was like almost the same thing so um from a concept standpoint i don't think it's a great concept i can see i gave this a five i don't remember why <laughs> i just remember the whole experience like the, i went my last trip on september so it's fresh in my mind um yeah. I, I like how everything is clean inside. There's clean lines. It's it's the queue is engaging, right? It's not as mm-hmm. engaging as other queues, but like there's something about it that was just nice and simple, right? Yep. Um, I enjoyed that. The ride itself was streamlined. It, it, it's good. I like the concept that it's just a little little game that you can play, and the kids can my kids can be like engaged with it. It's something different for them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if this was something that where I'm going with just my wife, I don't think we would do this attraction. Um, so maybe I shouldn't have given it a five. I should probably given it a four. <laughs> a, a four something else like that. Question number two is how well do you think Toy Story Mini delivers for its target audience? And what do you think the target audience is? So I think the target audience is just about everybody. I know you're joking like you and your wife would go on, but I think, you know, a lot of couples go on and they're sure. like, you know, c- competitive and stuff like that. So my wife hates video uh, games. So she, would yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it's not for the non video game, right. the haters or whatever. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's got a wide appeal you know i think like you said it's good for kids because they can play along and stuff like that And it's not like it's not real hard to to execute and stuff like that so i think it has a wide audience it's for families and it's for everybody so um i gave this a five because even though i might you know not love the concept i think they like 
over execute over delivered on you know on executing a maybe minimalist idea yeah i i gave this a four i, I mean i've never seen the breakdown of uh, an attraction attractionality like this like basically everybody gave this thing a five across the boards which which mm-hmm. totally surprised me yeah i'm a little surprised too because i mean i know this used to be like the big hot attraction like i remember the running of the bulls to get the paper fast pass and stuff like that but it's you know, hasn't really been updated in a while. There's a, like a lot of it still better, looks like a new impressive ride, rides. Though, it's a good ride. Yeah, I'm not saying uh, I'm I, I, like I thought it would get all ones or something, but no I feel Space like this Ranger was like being yeah old and dated. This is you know, but this is some of the highest scores of anything, and I'm a little surprised it's that high. How much do you personally enjoy this attraction? I give it a four. I think Same. it's good. I think it's. I think it, it needs a bit of an update. I think it could use some new scenes and stuff like that. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, and I enjoy it. Um, but I think it's ready for an update. And, you know, compared to other things in the park, it's certainly not a top priority. I only enjoy this if I'm playing with my kids. I mean, my, my wife is not a video game person, I think, she's, but she's ultra competitive. And mm-hmm. so the blending of not being a good video game player and being ultra competitive, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. Um, but, like, you know, if we're, if we're going, I, I'd rather go grab a beer rather than wait online to go see this if it was just the wife and I. But if it was the kids, I know they, they love shooting those things, so that, that's always fun to watch. Um, how well do you think Toy Story Mania fits into Toy Story Land and Hollywood Studios? I'm shocked anyone gave this other than a five because this is perfect for Toy Story Land. Yeah, I think it works well. Um, you know, it doesn't fit perfectly in the back. You know, everything else is the backyard, but this is obviously something that the game that they had and the toys set up and stuff like that. And so I think it, it you know, it, it fits quite well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to kill them for weird theming type of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely, it's, it's Toy Story Ride belongs in Toy Story Land. And we're, we're right there. <laughs> don't um, overthink it. Yeah, don't overthink it. All right, we're going to wrap up today's show. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Actually, hold on. You had a follow-up question, and I forgot it. What is your follow-up question? For this? Well, it was just if they did something else with that space, like do you think there could be a better use of that space, I guess, because it's a large building mm. that's kind of right in the middle of that. You know, So it, it is connected to Toy Story Land, but it also backs up against Galaxy's Edge. And it's – so I guess – would you leave it just just as is, maybe update it or whatever, or do you think they should do something else with that space? I mean, I, I think Toy Story Land cannot be shrunk anymore. Yeah. So I think it has to fit into Toy Story Land. I would do like a really good Toy Story like dark ride in that building. Like oh. I would just completely redo it and just do a nice story element because Toy Story Land, you've got Slinky Dog Dash, which is an awesome attraction, but some people don't like roller coasters, right? Mm-hmm. You've got um, – Alien Sword like Saucers, and like that ride is kind of lame. It's you know, a mm-hmm. typical you know amusement park ride, right? There's nothing fancy about it. It's just the cool Disney theming. But there's nothing else in that 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 area that really attracts you, that gets you immersed into Toy Stories, Toy Story, yeah. right? So I think a, like a, some kind of storytelling element that's really cool. Pick whatever crazy scene from Toy Story that you like out of the four movies and kind of stick it on there and let them have that journey. Don't, and I wouldn't want them to try to advance the story in any way. Like, mm-hmm. do it like a Remy's, right? It's a part of the story that's really fun, and maybe it's maybe it's the chase scene um, from the first movie where, where they're trying to get back in the car. Maybe it's, you know, something creepy like at the antique store from the last Toy Story movie. I, I don't know what it is, but, like, you pick something and... Um, Kind of tell the story of that of that scene, and don't be a medley. Don't be like, "Here's Toy Story One, here's Toy Story Two, like just <laughs> and kind of just because." Um, and then it often reminds me of the um, when I think about stuff like this, the Beauty and the Beast dark ride from Tokyo. Is it Tokyo oh, yeah. that just mm-hmm. opened yep. a couple years mm-hmm. ago? That was amazing, and they, they should probably put something like that in Toy Story. That's kind of like the level that I'm thinking of. But that it would never cool. happen because it's like super expensive to do something like that. Yeah. But and it would take five years, no, ten years to to build, even though they built it already probably somewhere. <laughs> uh, okay. So would you put anything else there? I have to ask you um, a question. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Like, unless you were going to go out the other way or something like that, you can't reduce the number of attractions there. I like your dark ride idea. I like. I don't know if they could split the space and do something like, cause I still think some sort of play area would be good in toy story land. Like whether it's a I'd be too crowded though. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm not a fan of play areas. I'm not a fan of like sitting down in Disney, watching my kids play in a playground environment while there's other things yeah. to be doing, but that's, that's a personal thing. That doesn't mean yeah. that, that's a bad thing. 
Yeah, I was just trying to think if there's some smaller, they could use less of that space and then maybe borrow some of it to do something for Galaxy's Edge, but um, I like your dark, dark ride idea. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up here. We're right, we're just shy of the one hour mark. Uh, Phil, where can they find us on social media, just in case? They don't yeah, so find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and our YouTube channel are all at the DVC pod and the Discord server. And look, you know, we'll be pushing out the links to that um, engagement topic about um, what dining you're most looking forward to. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, it's going to start on that Wednesday. I don't do a good enough job at the top of the show to remind everybody to like and subscribe. If you've liked listening, make sure you give us five stars on, you know, uh, Apple uh, iTunes. And then what or Spotify? I don't know what. If some people got thumbs up, some people have hearts, you know, whatever. Um, make whatever sure you have to do to tell people you like us, yes. do that. <laughs> On YouTube, um, we're seeing more and more comments. So leave a comment. We'll make sure we go back and forth. We appreciate your viewership. Um, smash the like button, as the kids say. We'll go from there. Uh, that being said, guys, thank you for. Uh, watching and listening. Happy beloved Mother's Day to everybody out there. Even though this is now Tuesday, it's far <laughs> just in mind. Uh, that being said, have a great week and a good night, everybody. Thank you. Take care, everyone.